Across the Fence, it's our monthly Bird Notes program, and we're going to travel outside Vermont to a more westerly locale. Good afternoon, and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. As always, on the fourth Wednesday of the month, I'm joined by Mark Labar, conservation biologist for Audubon, Vermont. Great to see you again. Always good to be here. So you've been traveling, and this time to the West Coast. I, I did go to the West Coast, but before we talk about that, I want to talk a little bit about something that happened to me last night, which was kind of cool, and hopefully we'll maybe turn the tide for one of our local, uh, or not so local, um, teams. Um, I was at the house cooking dinner, got a call from Patty Bordell over at the Moortown General Store, and they had a hummingbird that was stuck in their storeroom. Oh no! And I guess it was moving around, and it had was seeing all the brightly colored soda bottle caps and was thinking, you know, but it was very high up and they couldn't get it out the door. So I suggested to her um, that she either get a, like a feeder if she could, but in the meantime, get something red hanging in, in the doorway and see if the hummingbird would come down. Well, uh, she called back a little bit, you know, like 10 minutes later and said she had found um, a fleece red socks um, jacket that she hung in the doorway and the hummingbird came right down and flew right out the door and was back outside. So I, I, I'm, I'm thinking <laughs> it's a sign. I'm, I'm thinking it's a sign maybe that you know to boost the Red Sox along here it's because they've had a little bit of a tough start. Yeah that is a good uh, that's a good sign. All right you just visited one of my favorite places. Yes we I went out to California um, my family lives out there my mom's brother and sister and in particular we went to a place called Bolinas. Uh, Bolinas is on the southern tip of uh, Point Reyes Peninsula, just north of San Francisco. And it's this uh, great little spot. It's got this uh, amazing lagoon called the Bolinas Lagoon, and you can see it there to the right. And then Stinson Beach, which is a big surfing place. And it's an awesome place for birds. It's an important bird area in California, and it's um, a really easy one. I saw a lot of birds, so I thought I'd just talk a little bit about some of the ones that I saw. I can't fit them all in. Excellent. So what have we got? Well, what we, uh, you know, I get, you get out there, and the first thing, you know, the, I see you walk out on my aunt's porch. Of course, it's what April here, mm -hmm. um, so it's still pretty gray. But in California, it's green. The flowers are going, and right off the bat, I get a little bush tit that comes in and starts quapping around. Now, it's not a very colorful bird, but it's one that we don't have here in the east, so uh, always a good one to see. And shortly after that, um, in the same kind of brown-toned existence, um, I had a California towhee. Now, here in the east. East, we have our eastern towhee, mm -hmm. and there's lots of different towhee species, but this was one, again, right in the backyard as I'm drinking coffee. These two birds are skittering around and um, having a great time, and check, check, I can you know put two <laughs> onto my list. Uh, I went down into the town of Bolinas uh, just to take a walk around, and on my travels down into town, I came across a chestnut-backed chickadee. Ooh. Now, this I, I love this bird. This was really nice, and you know, you're walking along, and you hear something that sounds like a chickadee. Uh, chickadees, you know, all have a tendency and you look up and I knew it wasn't a black capped, which is what we have here, but that real brown on it um, and chestnut color, you know, it was really nice to see a chickadee with a little different um, flavor That's to it. That's beautiful. And then, of course, buzzing around like bees <laughs> out there are the hummingbirds. And this is probably the one hummingbird that, you know, I saw the most, which is Anna's hummingbird. And again, the flowers are just prolific. Nobody really needs to hang up hummingbird feeders. And they were all over the backyard and they twittering away. So um, a great bird to, uh, you know, just to see and make you think that our hummingbirds are on our way back as well. Uh, right after that, you get into town, and I hear this weird <laughs> noise, and you get a California quail. Uh, and it's funny that, you know, you see that little pompadour of a yeah. feather there. Uh, you know, you, to see this, you wonder how that thing stays up. But these, this guy was right down in the bushes down in town and making a whole bunch of noise. And so um, that, was, that was great. Again, compared to our ruffed grouse here, which mm -hmm. is a, well, ruffed grouse, when it fluffs up its neck feathers, can be kind of nice, but does and have the, you know, that little top that this guy has. Uh, and then, of course, squawking around, we have our blue jays. Um, one of the jays that they have out there is the Stellar's jay. And uh, has a nice crown, that dark head, um, to, you know, behaves like a jay, acts like a jay, it is a jay. <laughs> they also had scrub jay out there too, which is a bird that we don't necessarily see. And then took a little walk on the beach, and what pops up but a Wilson's warbler. Now, this is a bird that winters out there, 
Uh, and you can see that little black cap. And I actually had one of these once I got back. It was moving through the Audubon, so they do migrate through. But it's a bird that nests much further north uh, than, than where we are here in Chittenden County. So um, it's, it was fun to see a little warbler bopping around, too, that I hadn't seen in a long time. So you were obviously by the water, so you must have seen a lot of water birds too. Yes, so Bolinas is right there. You got the Pacific Ocean. I was there with my kids, and um, you know one of the things that you see flying over you, big bomber squadrons <laughs> of brown pelicans. Uh, these are great birds, and you know when you first see them, um, you know they're very slow moving, and you know they just fly by, and so that was really cool for the kids to be able to see. And of course, over the ten days we were there, you'd see them pretty much everywhere, so you got used to them. But that first time you see him is And then really to watch great. him dive bomb in the water And then is watch fun. him hit the water and they'll sit. Owen, uh, my son, was doing a little surfing and so, you know, you'd see the Owen surfing and the pelicans next to him or a little further out. Um, and that was all good. And we didn't see any great whites. That's a big area for great white sharks. So there's always good. a little say. <laughs> <laughs> Glad um, to hear that. And then, of course, in Bolinas Bay itself, uh, you, we saw a lot of western grebes. Um, there were quite a few number of shorebirds, but we get a couple of grebes. Well, we get pied-billed grebe here, uh, is the one that breeds here, and this is uh, this is just a little bit longer necked and you know a very graceful bird that you would see once the tide came in and filled up Bolinas Lagoon, and then a bird that both coasts share, um, the snowy egret. <clears throat> and what I like about this egret is those bright yellow socks or shoes <laughs> or whatever you want to um, say. This bird really, you know, once you see those feet, it's an easy one to identify because there aren't any other egrets with that really, um, you know, white uh, color. We get the great egret, mm -hmm. which is white, but it doesn't have those yellow feet. So did you stay in the San Francisco area or did you travel around? Or? We did. We actually drove down the coast uh, and went down to the aquarium down in Monterey. Mm -hmm. So we spent a little bit of time down around Monterey, which was great, a little different thing. You know, drove through, um, you know, artichoke country. You see where all your artichokes come from. Uh, but we did pick up a couple of birds, again, birds that you don't see here on the East Coast, which were kind of nice. And one of those was a pelagic cormorant. Now, here on Lake Champlain, we have the double-crested cormorant. And that's a bird that you see pretty commonly. And uh, out west, you have a bird like this, the pelagic cormorant, a little bit smaller. That white patch right on the, the back end there really kind of you know ties it in. There's another cormorant called a Brant's cormorant, but again, nice to see a cormorant of a different feather, so to speak. Um, out in the waters, uh, a little bit further out, in playing around with the sea otters, we would see some surf scoters. Uh, this was, um, you know, it's a sea duck, but it has that uh, really funky looking yeah, what bill. Is that? That, well, this is a male, and it's just, you know, kind of showing off in its, in its own way. Uh, that little white on the back of the neck, uh, that's what you kind of see sometimes when you see him flying. But this is a bird that we would often see out on the water. And then a really cool gull, uh, a Hearman's gull. Now this is in its immature plumage, uh, but it was, and you know, you're seeing all sorts of things out at this natural setting. This was a bird that was actually feeding off of things that people had dropped, you know, from when we were at the aquarium. Mm -hmm. But still, it's a good bird. You can add it to your list. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just like the bill and just that brown color uh, just separates it from all of our other white gulls. And then our back, on our drive back, we picked up, um, I picked up this one, which is the black-necked stilt. And so uh, this was a cool bird, just the, just the legs alone, you know, seeing those. Yeah, it's a great name. And, and when you look at this, you know, it's kind of interesting when you look at bird's legs, and you can, where that bird's leg is bending is actually the ankle. Oh, really? So that's why when you watch birds walk, um, they're actually walking on their toes, and that first segment that comes out is actually their foot, and that would be their ankle. Their thighs are actually tucked up into the, underneath the feathers. So it's a great example of how, you know, there's some modifications that birds take on. Um, and then we drove north of there, and we went to the top of Point Reyes, and um, a great bird was the common myrrh. We saw one of those, um, a colony of those, right off the tip of Point Reyes. And this is kind of the penguin of the north. And so they nest here, and they nest about 25 miles off the coast at a place called the Farallon Islands, which mm -hmm. I went out to. God, it's got to be more than 20 years ago. Um, it was my first experience doing bird work, and uh, I did a lot of work with common myrrh, so it was kind of it was great to see them as well.
Excellent. Now, you mentioned a rescue before the show. Well, it was interesting. We um, went down to the beach in Bolinas, and we were looking at, you know, the tide pools, and there sitting before us is what I think was a Pacific, an immature Pacific loon, um, and it was just sitting there, and uh, it looked at us, so we picked it up, and uh, I was able to um, bring it down to the water. Uh, it, I, I don't know whether it made it. Once it got in the water, it was fine, and it mm -hmm. floated around a little bit. It didn't dive or anything, but uh, oftentimes loons, you can see those feet there. Yeah. They're so far back on their body that once they get stranded, they really can't walk or anything like that. They, you know, they can push themselves a little bit, but not that much. So just getting this bird back towards the water was a big thing, but it was kind of interesting to see a bird that big, that close. And it looks like I'm really squeezing it hard. I'm not. I'm just kind of keeping the wings there. Um, the feathers on that, the coat, you know, the feathering on that is pretty loose. So mm -hmm. um, I'm not <laughs> hurting the bird at all, but we kind of felt good at the end of the day that we had nice. helped a loon get back in the water. Well, that's great. Well, I know we have uh, some time for some viewer mail. We have a letter from Lorraine Tarbox of Coventry. She says, we do enjoy watching birds at our feeder, and we can identify most of them, but these recently came to a plate of sunflower seeds perched outside of a window. We're a little stumped as to none of the pictures in our bird books look exactly like these. They resemble the pine siskin, but we see no yellow on them. They eat the sunflower seeds with off, without flying off, differing from the chickadees, which grab and fly off. And says, earlier this year, we were also pleasantly surprised to have a large flock of bohemian wax wings eating off of apples that didn't fall from the trees. After some research, we decided they weren't cedar wax wings after all. Yep, we had mentioned this earlier. There was a good year for bohemian wax wings, and this is indeed a uh, pine siskin. Mm -hmm. um, some of them can have a little more yellow, and in looking at your books, you can, you know, they show pine siskins with sometimes with a lot of yellow in them. But that narrow bill, which is very much like a goldfinch, uh, and just that streaking in, and is, you know, points that this is a, a pine siskin, and the behavior as well. Mm -hmm. They'll go to a feeder like a goldfinch, and they'll sit there at the feeder and eat it, as opposed to as they mentioned mentioned a chickadee that goes back and forth with um, the sunflower seeds. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then I think I have one um, letter here, and uh, this is from Gordon Hipko. Um, and he writes, he's from Cumberland Head over Plattsburgh, New York. I've noticed all the power poles have nesting, I guess, osprey on them. So he's talking about going across the sandbar mm -hmm. up there. I live on Cumberland Head near the ferry dock. I was wondering if the power poles behind my house are conductive for nesting or are they too far from the water? Um, it's it's kind of tough, you know, though birds up in sandbar do really use those power poles and the power poles are almost perfectly situated because they're out there, they're in the middle of the marsh, they're right next to the, um, the water and so they provide all of the, you know, what the osprey need there. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where the power pole is uh, for Gordon, but it may be in a situation where it's a little more inland, mm -hmm. not that close to water, and so because of that, the um, you know the osprey haven't um, really chosen that. Plus, on and South Hero, they you know the power companies have also put some right. of the structures up there for them to nest. But I think I think the osprey would have nested there anyway, and the structures are just to get them away from the the power lines. Right. I have a question for you too. I was out walking and I saw this bird. It was um, dark gray, it had a black tail and a blackish head, and it was singing like crazy. And I said, well, I think it looks like a catbird, but catbirds are supposed to make like a cat sound. They do, and, that, and the cat sound is actually their call. Mm -hmm. And so if you hear that, yeah, it's kind mm -hmm. of a, then that's kind of their call. But their singing voice, they are a mimid, so they're in with the mockingbirds and thrashers. Um, catbirds have a very like, strong repertoire mm -hmm. and very melodic, jumps around, uh, almost incessant to some um, extent. My coworker, um, said she has a couple catbirds that are singing outside of her house right now and they're driving her crazy. <laughs> so they can get a little bit over the top. But uh, yeah, that, that's exactly what it was. And if you probably got a little bit closer or had binoculars, you would have noticed uh, red undertail coverts. Oh, okay. And they like shrubby, you know, we have them in lilacs over at the Audubon. They like shrubby edges and stuff. So it's a bird that uh, many folks would come across just normally as they Yeah, I had my first existence. encounter in a blackberry patch. 
Yep, and they and they'll <laughs> do. And it's funny because cat birds, we used to ban a lot of them, mm -hmm. and they eat a lot of fruit, and so um, oftentimes they would stain your shirt with the, as you're trying to ban them, and we would call that lifers because usually you couldn't get the stain out. Good to know. Don't stand under a cat bird when <laughs> you're right. in the That's right. blackberry patch. That's right. Well, if you have a bird-related question, you can pass it on to Mark. You can write to him at Audubon, Vermont, 255 Sherman Hollow Road in Huntington, 05462. You can also contact Mark by email. The address is mlabar at audubon.org. Send Mark your questions, and he'll try to find the answers on an upcoming edition of Bird Notes. Thanks, Mark. You're welcome. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence. For a video copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-ATF-3430. Across the Fence is brought to you as a public service by University of Vermont Extension and WCAX-TV.